Hi, I am Jerome from Fastlane. Today I would like to show you some configuration tips about the Wisdom blade. You know the Wisdom, it's two 4404 controllers on one blade that you put into a CAT65 switch. This is an expensive gear altogether with a supervisor etc. You're looking at $80,000 so I know that most of you don't have that at home. But basically it's one of the scarecrows of the exam because beyond the configuration to have the Wisdom blade communicate with the CAT65, the Wisdom is nothing more than 4404. So here I would like to show you how you configure the Wisdom to communicate with the CAT65. Hopefully if you can't do it yourself, uh, learning this video you'll be able to be more comfortable in your lab. So here in my setup I have one CAT6500 with one Wisdom blade and as you know it's two 4404 controllers so I have one console connection to each of the Wisdoms. So if I connect to the CAT65, one first thing I can do to check how my Wisdom is set is to use the show Wisdom status command. So if I say show Wisdom status, it says oh invalid input detected. So if this happens to you, don't panic. What this means is that this iOS doesn't recognize the Wisdom. A quick way to check what's going on is to use the show module. Show module tells you what modules you have in this CAT65 and you see that the first module which is called Wisdom something is unknown. Unknown Wisdom status not detected that means that probably your CAT65 is not running the right iOS code. So if I say show version I see that it's running the 12217D SXB11A code. Oh, that's bad because for the Wisdom you need your CAT65 to run at least 12218SXF2 or later. So 12217D something is not going to do it. Luckily, in this case, uh, this is on purpose and we have two codes available in the flash. If I say dear dear flash, you see I have also the S72033 blah 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 12233SXH bin. So this one is going to run properly. I'll be able to run the Wisdom if I use that code. So the first thing is to tell my switch to run that code. So I go conf T and boot system disk 0 and all that thing here. Copy and paste. I need to uh, save and reboot and of course I'm going to use time lapse so that you don't have to wait uh, 5 minutes because booting a switch is pretty long. So reload and back in a couple of seconds. Okay we're back. If you look at the clock down right here on the time lapse you'll see it's been quite a few minutes so it's not something you want to do every morning um, especially in the lab. But if we go back to enable mode and we do a show version now we should have oops, show version. Here we go. We should have the right code here. 12233s xh6. Perfect. So now if I say show module, I should have my wisdom up and running. It's here. It's recognized now. So happiness. And you see also the MAC addresses. And online diagnostic is passed. And if I say show wisdom status, this command should be recognized now. Here we go. Awesome. So of course here nothing is configured yet, right? So that's the, the point. We need to configure the CAT65 to communicate properly with the Wisdom blade. The Wisdom actually is pre-configured on my in my case. It has a um, IP address in the management interface. The service interface is set to the HTTP, but you see we don't see anything yet because there is no communication. So you need to know that there are two communication means between the CAT65 and the Wisdom blade on each of the two 4404s, of course. The first one is the management side. That's where all data is going to uh, be sent up and down. So that's here. So we need to set that side. And there is also the service interface side, which is used for uh, backplane communication between the CAT65 and the Wisdom blade. So this one also needs to be up and running if you want communication between the CAT65 and the 4404, and if you want the CAT65 to recognize the configuration of your 4404. Okay, you see here that my Wisdom is in slot number one. This is important because it means that the interfaces communicating between the switch and the Wisdom will be set to gigabit interface one something. So if I say show interface summary, 
you'll see that we have those gigabit interfaces here from 1 to 10. So that's the way it works. The first four here are the management communication between the first WISM and the CAT65. So that's data traffic for the first WISM. 5 to 8 here are communication for data traffic to the second WISM. So this is also inline uh, data. 9 is the communication to the service interface of the first WISM, pretty much here. And 10 is the communication to the service interface to the second WISM. All right. So 4 for data for the first WISM, next 4 data for the second WISM, then service interface for the first WISM, and then service interface for the second WISM. Do you need to remember that? Well, yes, yeah, somehow, because you'll be creating some lag interfaces to the management, so you need to know which ports are involved. And you'll need also to set up some uh, communication to the service interface on the WISM, and it's better to know which interface it's going to on the CAT65. You'll see why in a, in a few minutes. So the first order of business is to create a communication mean between the CAT65 and the service interfaces. Um, let's suppose I'm going to use a VLAN like VLAN 192. That's quite classical, so I go conf t, VLAN 192. And I'm also going to create an interface uh, for that VLAN, so interface VLAN 192. And I can give it an IP address of, I don't know, IP add 192.168. I don't know, 10.1 for example, 255, 255, 255.0. Okay, exit. So that's the VLAN where I want to have my um, service interface. Next, I need to put my service interfaces in that VLAN 192. So my service interfaces need to have an IP address in 192.168.10.1. There are several ways of doing that. Uh, basically two and a half ways, or two ways and, and two subgroup in the second one. The first one is static. So you go to your WISM here and you run the, the uh, uh, initial setup configuration and you just give yourself an IP address uh, for the service interface. So here it's pre-configured as I told you before and if I say show interface summary um, you see that my service port actually doesn't have an IP address yet. So I could, you know, rerun the the, um, uh, the setup, or I could go uh, config uh, interface address service interface, and and give it an IP address, you know, IP address and so on, and that would give us a static IP address uh, for the service interface, and it should be in the right subnet, right? So it should be in 192.168.10 or something, and it, it would communicate with uh, with the CAT65. I still need one more command to do that. Um, at, at the end. So that's one way. You give a static IP address and then you'll need to tell the CAT65 that the uh, WISM is in this subnet. Another way, which is of course probably more interesting, is to set up a DHCP service on your CAT65. So that's the second way. And here again, that's where we divide in the two and a half logic. Uh, you can set up a DHCP scope and let the service interfaces on the both uh, WISMs get the IP address automatically. So they will get any IP address within that scope. Um, so let's do that. IP DHCP excluded address 192.168.10.1 of course and say I don't know 192.168.1.1 I'm, I'm just uh, excluding my uh, uh, CAT65 IP address. Okay. Then I can set up a scope, which is a IP. I'm on a laptop here, which is not comfortable. IP DHCP pool. Um, I don't know, WISM service. And I give him network uh, address 192.168.10.0.255.255.0. And of course, default router. 192.168.10.1. Okay, so if I do that, my um, WISMs are going to get an IP address right here from that subnet. I still need a command to add, same as when you set up a static on the on the, on the service interface. You still need one more command. I'm going to show you at the end.